the root of every crisis that a believer has is identity crisis the root of every crisis a man in christ can ever have is identity crisis once you are able to deal with identification the light and the truth of who he is is unveiled welcome to the moment of revelational teaching with prophet dr kristen e samuel bringing to you the revelation of christ stay tuned we're teaching on the gifts and ministries of the holy spirit the gifts and ministries of the holy spirit genesis chapter 1 verse 1 put it up on the screen for me genesis chapter 1 verse 1 put it up on the screen in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth we see that there was a time called the beginning god elohim is the greek the hebrew word elohim god that entity called god elohim that spirit called god elohim created the heaven and the earth next verse and the earth was without form and void is the hebrew word toho boho the earth was toho boho it means nothing 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 the earth was nothing 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 meaning it is the spirit of god in the place of the earth or in the earth that makes the earth something uh, someone is not catching me it is the spirit of god in the earth that makes the earth something and i'm going to show you the earth was non and void was nothing nothing toho boho it was emptiness it was a chaotic mass it was a chaotic disorder rather and darkness was upon the face of the deep when you see darkness upon the face of the deep it's not talking about night when you see darkness in the scriptures it's not talking about night it's not time as in night time darkness covered the face of the deep the absence of light is the presence of darkness the absence of light is the presence of darkness so and who is god god is light god is light and in him there is no darkness at all so the absence of god in the face of the earth is the introduction of of darkness because the absence of light is darkness the absence of life is death are you following me here so the earth was without form and void and darkness the absence of the spirit so the spirit of god was absent in the activities of man the spirit of god was absent in the activities of man remember i taught you in this church genesis chapter 1 verse 1 the genesis of god and i showed you the death of christ in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in a mystery so the earth was dark because the activities of man was darkness the activities of man in the earth was darkness and god was absent in their activities now watch this and the spirit of god alabakataya and the spirit of god and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters the spirit of god waters every time you see water in the scripture water is not talking about water water is not get me water to drink the spirit of god cannot be moving over a river doing what in a river does he want to fish catch fish <laughs> is the spirit of god a fisherman if he's moving over the water then he wants to catch fish but the interest of god is not fish the interest of god is not animal the interest of god is not the element the interest of god is man and so some said in some scripture what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you should visit him what is man not the elements not the trees not the fishes not animals man so when you see water water there is the is the hebrew word im and im means spirit im means spirit im means spirit 
him means spirit the spirit of god moved upon the face of the spirit so man is a spirit he lives in a body and has a soul man is a spirit man is not an animal and that's why when you die you will go somewhere your spirit lives forever so what you do here on planet earth will determine the life you will live in eternity yeah <laughs> yeah some people live this life as though this is where it ends if your treasures are in this world you are of all men most miserable all men most miserable how many years are you going to live on earth it's going to be over in the twinkle of an eye and you will open your eyes to the other side and discover that you are actually not mortal you are actually immortal So darkness was in the spirit of man. Darkness was in the spirits of man. So the Holy Ghost was hovering and that was a typology of the preaching of the gospel to men in the earth in a figure of speech or in a prophecy by Moses. Yeah. The Bible is a book of prophecy. The Bible is a book of prophecy. God's eternal plan is for man and that plan is salvation yeah. that plan is salvation so the spirit of God moved was hovering over men in order to dwell in them that's what it means by waters there <laughs> are you still here next verse next verse and God said and God said let there be light let there be light and there was light god said light be and light came into existence light came into existence in the affairs of men in the activities of men and jesus went about telling his disciples you are the light of the world a city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden men do not light a candle and put it on under the bushel let your light so you are the light that god was talking about in genesis chapter 1 verse 3 let your light shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven and god said let there be light this light was in sunlight this light was the existence of the born again man the illumination of god's spirit in the heart of man that was the light the illumination of god's spirit in the heart of man so god will now rule and reign in the activities of man by the spirits by the spirits so there will be certain men on the face of the earth who will not just go about activities on earth without the involvement or the partnership of the spirits so people like us when we go about life we don't just live life like people of the world we live life as men of the spirit as many that are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god i'm carried by the spirit i'm controlled by the spirits the spirit controls me i'm no longer myself i don't have the wherewithal to live the life that everybody else lives in the world why don't you drink i can't drink because i don't have the wherewithal why don't you go to the club i can't go to the club because i don't have the wherewithal there is something controlling me it's called the spirit it's called the spirit led of the spirit it's not hey lord lord i want to go to 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 to, to lago are you uh, will you lead me there no that's not what led of the spirit means it's not lord i want to travel lord i'm planning to relocate is it your will you're a you're a babe lord are you leading me to california go to california if you have a good job my friend <laughs> that's not the leading of the spirit the leading of the spirit is that you are controlled you are controlled something is controlling you you are possessed by the spirit of god You're controlled it means to be carried by the spirits led of the spirit led by the spirit led by the spirit so god's intention for man was that he will indwell man it's his plan for man was that he will indwell man and control men and when he controls men he has 
by implication controlled their activities when he controls you by implication he controls your activities so when you're supposed to get angry because someone cursed you out you can't get angry because he controls your activities he controls your activities you can't do what you used to do because you are controlled by a higher spirit a divine being yeah you're controlled yeah you're controlled by the spirit of god so that was god's intention and let's now begin to investigate let's now begin to look into the manifestation of this spirit in the life of the man that god controls the manifestation of the spirit in the life of the man that god controls are you still here with me we've been able to establish that the spirit of god controls the believer and the spirit of god in the believer is the light that shines in that believer so a believer does not walk in darkness a born again man does not walk in darkness you are the light somebody shout i'm the light louder shout i'm the light say i don't walk in darkness louder say i don't walk in darkness isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse a rod out of the stem of jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and this scripture is talking about the person of the lord jesus in a prophecy that has been fulfilled watch this next verse and the spirit of the lord and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of the of knowledge and of the fear of the lord next verse and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the lord he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reproof after the hearing of his ears next verse but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reproof with equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth the earth was without form and void he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth let there be light he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth let there be light and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked <laughs> uh, shall he slay the wicked now go back to verse 1 i want to begin to establish something very deep go back to verse 1 this verse 1 verse 1 verse 1 verse 1 verse 2 verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and mind the spirit of the knowledge of the lord and the fear of the lord now when you look at this scripture you would see that there are three seven rather seven manifestations of the spirit which we call the seven spirits of god and it's not that god has seven spirits no god doesn't have seven spirits but seven manifestations of the spirit upon the believer seven manifestations of the spirit upon the believer let's begin to count and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him number one spirit of the lord spirit of the lord number two spirit of wisdom number three spirit of understanding number four spirit of counsel number five spirit of might number six spirit of knowledge number seven spirit of the fear of the lord and these are seven manifestations of the spirit in the life of a man the number seven in the hebrew is the number of completion it's called shalahim or in modern times shalom shalom means wholeness completeness it means the completion of the spirit in the life of a man the fullness of the spirit in the life of a man and once a man is not functioning in either of any of these dimensions of the spirit he's lacking in one area of his life are you still here are you still here let's collaborate this zachariah chapter 3 verse 9 behold the stone 
that I laid before Joshua. Now, Joshua here is not Joshua of the book of Joshua. Joshua is the Hebrew word Yeshua. And you know Joshua in the book of Joshua, his name was Yeshua. Which is also the name of Jesus. Yeshua was a common name in Israel. So the Bible is not English language. So when you see Joshua there, you're thinking Joshua in the book of Joshua that led them out of Egypt. No, this is talking about a Yeshua to call. Which is Jesus in the Latin and Greek transliteration or Jesus in English. Please don't sleep. Pay attention. For behold the stone. The stone I have laid before Jesus. <laughs> Zatabarata. The stone is laid. The stone that the builders rejected have become the chief of the cornerstone. How did he lay that stone? Remember in Genesis, the book of the beginning. Genesis chapter 28 verse 13. The Bible says that East Jacob was running from his brother Esau and he arrived at a spot and he took a stone for a pillow. And then when he rested on that stone, he had a vision of God. He saw angels ascending and descending. And then when he woke up, he said, I was not aware the Lord is in this place. And he took a bottle of oil and poured it on the stone so the stone is anointed the stone is anointed and said this none other is the house of God Beth El Beth means house El means God this none other is the house of God so he called a stone the house of God he called a stone the house of God. This none other is the house of God and the gates of heaven. The house of God and the gates of heaven. And who is that stone? The believer is that stone. Ah, is this flying over your head? Are you catching this? Somebody say, I'm catching it. Talk to me. Say, I'm catching it. The believer is that stone. The stone that Jacob rested his head was the man in Christ. So the believer is the gate of heaven. So how can you tell someone like me, I'm going to hell? Are you out of your mind? I'm the gate of heaven. I'm not just going through the gate. I have become the gate. That means when I encounter an individual... I draw the person into heaven because I'm the gate of heaven. How are you the gate of heaven? When you preach the gospel of Christ to a sinner, to an unbeliever, you draw him into the house of God. You draw him into heaven because I am heaven. Somebody lift your hands and shout on the gate of heaven. Jump on your feet and shout on the gate of heaven. Jump on your feet and shout, I am the gate of heaven. Shout it louder, I'm the gate of heaven. Sit down, shout, I am in charge. I'm the gate. I'm the gate. I'm the gate. I'm the gate of heaven. Jesus said, Rejoice not because these spirits are, are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So heaven is no longer a subject matter. Your names are written already in heaven. That means you have the capacity to draw men into heaven. I'm the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven is the stone that Jacob rested his head upon in a typology which is the believer are you still here I lay before Jesus the stone Joshua Yeshua <laughs> and upon one stone that means there are several stones around the stone there are several stones around the stone when you are building a house you don't build a house with a stone <laughs> when you are building a house you will need several stones in building the house so upon one stone one stone 
shall be seven eyes <laughs> which are the seven spirits of God or the seven dimensions of the spirit of God upon one stone will be the manifestation the manifold dimensions of the spirit of God upon that stone one stone one stone one stone upon one stone shall be seven eyes <laughs> one stone <laughs> behold I will engraving the graving thereof see the Lord of hosts and I will remove the iniquity when one stone carries seven eyes I will remove the iniquity I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day in one day the iniquity of the land will removed it doesn't take God anything to restore America it takes men and women who understand the seven manifestations of the Spirit of God in their life and they can go out in their world and transform one man at a time I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day in one day in one day is possible by the seven dimensions of God's Spirit upon one stone so the believer is that stone can i show you that you are that stone in the new testament first peter chapter 2 wherefore lay aside malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings next verse as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby next verse if be so you have tasted that the good lord is gracious you have tasted that the good lord is gracious how many of you have tasted yeah i've tasted next verse to whom coming as unto a living stone <laughs> to whom coming as unto a living stone so who is the living stone the good lord that was gracious <laughs> a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God this stone man does not recognize this stone you may not look like it but I've been chosen by God I may not look like it but I've been chosen of God disallowed of men not amongst popular opinion who cares but I've been chosen of God so it doesn't matter what men say about you what matters is what God says about me I'm chosen of God it's allowed of men but chosen of God chosen of God and precious you are not just chosen but you are precious next verse ye also so Jesus the chosen of God was that living stone hmm. but ye also as lively stones so there are stones around the stone <laughs> are you paying attention Jama? there are stones around the stone so you also as living stones lively stones are built up a spiritual house because you need stones in building up the house so I am that stone that builds the house of God that is the house that God lives in I am the one giving God that protective edge I am the one giving God that resting place I am the house of God I am the house of God living stones built up a spiritual house now the word spiritual house spiritual house is the Greek word pneumaticus oikia I can spell P N E U M A Numa means spirit. T I C O S Ticus. House means Oikia. O K I A. Oikia. Pneumaticus Oikia. And Pneumaticus Oikia means a house full of the things of the spirit. A home 
full of the things of the spirit you are built up a home full of the things of the spirit now the things you are full of is not dollar and cars there is no money inside of you gold and silver is not in you if you are looking for gold and silver visit nigeria or ghana dig the ground you will find gold if you are looking for dollar in america become a doctor or become go into information technology invent something plenty of the dollar will come into your hands i can assure you that if you meet elon Musk, ask him the things that you are filled with are things of the spirit which makes it even more important i'm filled with all the things of the spirit eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things the things which god has prepared so there are things in the spirit prepared for you so the believer ought to just take advantage of the things of the spirit and rule and reign in his life and in his affair by the things made available in the spirit in the spirit healing is made available so if there's a sickness in your body you take advantage of healing in the spirit and bring it into your body and you live in perfect health it's things of the spirit but you won't find words like this around town you won't find it's motivation and 10 keys to success and yet they're not as successful as elon Musk and jeff bezel things of the spirit say i got the things of the spirit louder say i got the things of the spirit things of the spirit house of the spirit a holy priesthood so your priesthood is holy a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ are you blessed let's keep elaborating or collaborating on the stone matthew chapter 3 verse 9 matthew chapter 3 verse 9 this is jesus speaking and think not to say within yourselves he's speaking to the jews which you guys love you know many christians love jews you know someone walked up to me and said Jews are special people of God. They are going to heaven naturally. They're just going to heaven. I said, You are a joker. Jews, there are many of them in hell roasting right now. The rich man and Lazarus, remember that story. The rich man was in hell and lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and said, Father Abraham. So he called Abraham Father. So he wasn't a Gentile, he was a Jew. He was a seed of Abraham according to the flesh. He was in Abraham's descent, descendant, ancestry. He looked and said, Father Abraham, dip your hand into water. Dip your hand into water. He called him Father, but he was in hell. So it means that Jews go to hell. Stop deceiving yourself with Jewish items. Believers will buy a prayer shawl. They call it prayer shawl. And they put it on their head like this. Sholobo, shalobobo, sholobo. Now, even the Jewish inscription on the prayer shawl, you can't even read it. You are not even studious enough to. Do you know I, I can read all that Jewish inscription on the prayer shawl? And I can interpret each alphabet in the light of Jesus the Christ. You can't even read it. But you put it on your head. Feeling pious and spiritual. Who told you? A cloth makes you spiritual. A cloth does not make you spiritual. What makes you spiritual is that which comes on you like a cloth from heaven. When that cloth wraps itself on you from heaven, then you can go about town and demons will look at you and say, Of a shorty, you have been with the Lord. Not a cultural cloth 
that belongs to a people of a certain country it holds no spiritual value it holds no spiritual value what about the spirit inside of you and those jews don't believe in your jesus but they make merchandise of you they will sell that material to you and make money off you but they don't believe in jesus as the messiah they killed him they crucified him they killed him they loved a thief rather than him an innocent loving guy they crucified him and now you guys love those guys that crucified him oh they are the people of god someone said to me man of god i'm going to the to the mountain the the, the wailing wall in jerusalem please give me your prayer request give me your prayer points i'm going to the wailing wall and he asked for the prayer point with some money along some seed you sow a seed of one thousand dollars i take it to the prayer wall the wailing wall and i pray and god will hear the wall a wall false teachers and false prophets jesus said to the woman at the well a time cometh, and now is the time where true worshipers will not need to go to jerusalem to worship not to a mountain somewhere to worship but they that will worship the father because god is a spirit god you can't trap god in a location you can't trap god in time god stays out of time to regulate time he's a spirit and they that will worship god will worship him in spirit and in truth so you can lock yourself in the closet take off your brazilian hair and your bone straight hair and all of a sudden you are transported into the heavens and you will have direct access with the godhead but some people love a geographical location you are carnal you are still in the flesh you are you are earthy you are not in the spirit walk in the spirit walk in the spirit stop thinking about elements the things are in the spirit the things are in the spirit <laughs> do not think to yourself jesus talking to the jews now do not think to yourself we have abraham our father oh abraham is our father <laughs> we are made we got it made abraham is our father we got it don't think to yourself we got abraham our father he's talking to jews for i say unto you that god is able god is able of these stones <laughs> God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So the children of Abraham are not a physical descendant in Israel. The children of Abraham are these stones. The stone with the seven eyes. A lively stone according to Peter. Raised up as a spiritual house. So the children of Abraham is you and I. <laughs> I'm a son of Abraham. <laughs> God is able to raise up. That word raise up is an old Greek word that implicates that means that something was dead. <laughs> something was dead then God will breathe life upon it. When God breathes life upon it, it is raised from the dead. And when that stone is raised from the dead, it comes alive and becomes children unto Abraham. Yeah. So I'm a child of Abraham. And I'm that stone that is now the child of Abraham. And upon one stone is the seven eyes which is the seven dimensions of the spirit of god so it is the spirit of god that enables this stone the seven dimensions of the spirit you're getting blessed are you sure you're getting blessed 
Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 let's begin to round up verse 2 verse 2 verse 2 and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the first dimension of the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer is called the spirit of the Lord not the spirit of God because already as a believer you have the spirit of God in you but this is a flow or a manifestation of that spirit in you called the spirit of the Lord it's also called the spirit of Lordship the spirit of Lordship or the spirit of dominion the spirit of Lordship or the spirit of dominion he is the one who anoints you with power for service it's called the spirit of ownership ruach adonai that's what it's called in the greek in the hebrew ruach adonai that breath that owns you the spirit of ownership that means you can't do what you used to do before because something is owning you or something controls you the spirit of lordship the spirit of ownership it was that spirit that was upon elijah and elijah could confront 450 prophets of Baal. that spirit is confrontational yeah that spirit is confrontational when a believer functions in that dimension he confronts systems he confronts powers of hell it's confrontational because he's carried by the spirit when you find believers timid and in fear this dimension of the spirit is lacking in their life it's lacking it's confrontational you can walk up to that witch and say stop what you're doing because i know what you're doing stop what you are doing i'm warning you by the spirit repent otherwise in seven days you will not like what you will see yeah confrontation certain guys came to peter ananias and sapphira came to peter and peter said is this all you saw and they said yes and peter said you do not lie to me you lie to that dimension of the spirit in me on an ordinary day those guys will go free you do not lie to me that spirit is is a spirit that places judgment against the works of darkness you lie against the spirit and instantly the man fell dead it's confrontational it's confrontation elijah encountered 450 prophets of baal and slaughtered them in one day confrontational he said if you're on the lord's side move this way if his ball is god move this way he was confronting systems 450 witch doctors and only you it's like going to africa with all the powers of voodoo and gathering 450 voodoo priests if you don't have this dimension of the spirit of god they will kill you like a chicken and they will offer you to the gods <laughs> it's confrontational it's a spirit that places righteousness in a land that is people can't follow you without being righteous that is when that spirit is manifesting in you someone will do a wrong around you and then we'll just begin to cry to God and say Lord I'm sorry because something from you is oozing out of you and bringing that person to a place of conviction in righteousness the spirit of the Lord to rest upon him to rest upon him the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah that was the dimension of the spirit upon Elijah it came the hand of the lord it came upon elijah and he ran and overtook ahab's donkey a man could run more than horse more than horses that means when that spirit comes upon you it gives you speed it gives you speed so it doesn't matter who have gone ahead of you it doesn't matter it's just a matter of time when that dimension of the spirit is found in you it gives you speed above above your contemporaries the hand of the lord 
the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran. The hand of the Lord. Have you not read in the book of Acts of the Apostles? After Philip had an encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch and went straight away from the water, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Philip and Philip vanished from the sight of the eunuch. That means that spirit, when that dimension of the spirit is in you or found operational in you, you can be in one location right now and then you want to be in another location and then you find yourself in that location. Yeah. Find yourself in that location. It's a dimension of the spirit of the Lord and that spirit anoints you and it anoints you to demonstrate God's power anoints you to demonstrate God's power are you still here are you sure you're still here let's see what happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 verse 6 I want to show you something that happened the dimension of that spirit upon the life of brother Paul and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet. They found. Those guys could confront false prophets. When I was talking to someone, someone said, just be preaching your own. Don't talk about anybody's doctrine. Don't be preaching your own. You're a joker. think i will stand for unrighteousness certain guys using witchcraft and bewitching the whole church and bewitching god's people and making merchandise of god's people and you want me to shut up not in my generation i'm actually warming up my voice doing voice training it's not loud yet we are just warming up our voice they found a sorcerer but he wore a tag prophet <laughs> There are many of them in America. Many of them from Africa. The fact that someone can tell you your name, your phone number, your address doesn't mean he's a prophet. He can be a psychic, a voodoo priest with suit and tie. A, when a person is not able to uncode the scriptures of the prophet, he is not a prophet. Because everything that God will say has already been said by a class of prophets. The prophets. Moses to Malachi. If you can't decode their mysteries, then you are not of God. Anybody can see a vision. A prostitute in Nigeria called me and gave me a vision. A dream she had. And it was accurate. She's a prostitute. And you know, the, the painful part is that they'll tell me, God gave me a dream. You are mad. God gave you a dream. A prostitute. God gave a prostitute a dream. God. What has Christ got to do with Balaam? What has the Spirit of God got to do with the harlot? God Almighty. The Holy Spirit is not in you. But God came down and gave a harlot a dream for me. God lost his direction. And so people are swayed. Oh yeah, you, 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 the dream is from God. A child of Satan telling you the dream is from God. A sorcerer, but he wore the tag. He wore a white collar. Prophet. I'm a prophet of God. Prophet of God. God sent me unto the nations. But a false prophet. And to worsen the case, he was a Jew. <laughs> but a magician. But a son of Abraham. Which collaborates why Jesus said, Don't think. God will dump you and raise these stones. He was a Jew, but a false prophet. So who told you? You buy a prayer shawl and put it on your head. Jews are people of God. 
a sorcerer was a Jew someone who practiced magic but he was Abraham's descendant but he practiced witchcraft and a false prophet and he even added Jesus to his name whose name was Bar Jesus <laughs> do you know what Bar Jesus means son of Jesus Bar means son so he disguised himself just like us we say we are sons of God so he went and said I'm a son of Jesus I'm a messenger of Jesus I'm a son of Jesus I'm a son of Jesus so when people see him and because they hear Jesus oh no those guys pray in the name of Jesus they're also praying the name of Jesus no they are deceiving you they are taking your destiny and messing yourself messing you up so they can take you to hell just because someone prays in the name of Jesus doesn't mean he's a messenger of the Christ son of Jesus so everywhere he went he called himself I'm a prophet I'm a son of Jesus I'm a spiritual son of Jesus and people believed and he practiced witchcraft over them gave them prophetic words very accurate prophetic words he stole their money messed their destinies up son of Jesus next verse next verse which was with the deputy of that country so this man went so high that he had governmental influence you know how some some false prophet says oh i'm an apostle an apostle is someone who is an apostle to government Gov government is governmental authority so if you're not talking to governments so they snap pictures with politicians they go to the white house and they snap picture with the president then so i'm an apostle to his apostles is for the government so, you know government you're a false you're a sorcerer through your magic you got there so this guy with his magic went to high quarters corridors of power men of influence in the society the deputy of the country the deputy president of the country Sergius Polos that was the deputy's name the deputy vice president Sergius Polo a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul so when he saw Barnabas and Saul teaching about Jesus and the message of Jesus from Barnabas and Paul was different from the message of this false prophet called by Jesus he said Paul and Saul come Barnabas and Saul come 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 so when Barnabas and Saul came he desired please pay attention please he desired to hear the word of God next verse next verse but Elimus so this bad Jesus name this is his real name Elimus prophet Elimus who called himself the son of Jesus but Elimus the sorcerer for so is his in name by interpretation Elimus <laughs> You know, let me also shock you. Many of these false prophets change their physical, their real names, and they answer another name. Many of them from Africa. They don't answer their real names. Their real names can be Shobo Akule Momo. They will give them a name from the witchcraft coven. From the coven. So they'll begin to bear that name. And nowadays they force people who are their congregants to change their last name to their names. So they'll say to you uh, the lord said to me change your last name to my name it's a witchcraft operation to keep you more in bondage and that name you're changing to is the witchcraft name they gave them in the place of sorcery <laughs> so this is his real name elimas <laughs> we stood them so he withstood paul and barnabas are you listening to Dr. Christian, why should you listen to him? No, 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 don't, don't, don't listen to him. Why? Because they want to keep you in bondage because they know the word I'm teaching is Jesus Christ and him crucified. So they withstood Paul and Barnabas. He withstood them. Seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So what Paul and Barnabas was teaching was the faith. He was preaching a false doctrine a false teaching pay attention don't sleep 
he was teaching a false doctrine a false teaching but when they encountered the true word he decided to sway the man away from the truth yeah <laughs> that's the essence of satan he wants to always sway people don't go there no problem hell is waiting for you yeah. it's just a few years from now it's loading to turn away the deputy from the truth next verse next verse then Saul huh, look at the operation of the spirit upon Saul the spirit of the Lord upon Saul then Saul who is called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him next verse set his eyes on him and said full of the Holy Ghost he confronted him he was not afraid of him he confronted him and said oh fool of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil so I'm not afraid false prophets are children of Satan child of the devil oh be nice be politically correct be nice that's harsh when you are full of the spirit you confront systems God is not an American God is not democratic God is autocratic when he anoints you he gives you boldness to speak against systems there's no niceness when you confront children of Satan son of the devil child of the devil thou enemy of righteousness will thou not cease will thou not cease to pervert the way of the Lord so he was perverting the gospel he was perverting the way of the Lord next verse look at the judgment that came upon him and now behold the hand of the Lord now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee he pronounced judgment upon that system now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shall be blind they know me I'm waiting for the day they will meet me one-on-one -on -one and tell me prophet Christian what are you preaching I will place judgment on you I'm not playing with you thou enemy of God be blind for a season not seeing the Sun for a season and immediately they fell upon him a mist and a darkness immediately not not the next day instant judgment upon that false prophet a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand so this was a man that said he was a powerful prophet but now he's blind and seeking men to lead him a sorcerer and if you talk to believers today they are afraid of witches afraid of witches afraid of warlocks i'm afraid of witches and warlocks next verse <laughs> next verse and then the deputy when he saw what was done believed <laughs> he believed by what was done he believed by the operation of that dimension of the spirit of god that was upon the spirit of the lord that dimension of the seven spirit of god is the dimension that allows men you confront system and release men from the shackles of unbelief in the heart of men and then when they see these signs that follow you they believe the man wouldn't have believed it if it's just mere words jesus loves you this i know for the bible tells me so we've heard that since we were born why should we believe but when they see a sign be blind for a season <laughs> you will fall to the ground and say what must I do to be saved the deputy when he saw what was done believed after he believed he now gave the deputy they now gave the deputy sound doctrine and was astonished why was he astonished because the things that Paul and Barnabas was teaching was different from the 
false teaching he has attended all these false teachers churches <laughs> he was a, he, because if that doctrine was the same why will he now be astonished was surprised like wow so different wow and Paul and Barnabas said yes that's the truth of the word but false teachers and false prophets have made a caricature of your Christian life messed you up big cathedrals messed you up all you did in church all your life was to do the leg walk leg walk leg walk no manifestation in your life rise to your feet for more of our messages follow us on our social media platforms facebook at dr christian e samuel youtube at dr christian e samuel christian samuel ministries bringing to you the revelation of christ